My name is Dr. Carola Arndt, and I am a pediatric hematologist oncologist at Mayo Clinic. Today we're going to discuss a common childhood condition, which we see quite a bit of here at Mayo Clinic, called ITP. ITP stands for Immune Thrombocytopenic Purpura, or Idiopathic Thrombocytopenic Purpura. This is a condition that often presents after a viral illness in children, and it shows up by usually acute onset or sudden onset of bruising in a perfectly well child. So often the parents will be giving the child a bath in the evening and notice that the child is covered with bruises or other kinds of uh, bleeding under the skin called petechiae, which are little red dots underneath the skin. This prompts evaluation by a physician which on physical exam, the child shouldn't really have any other abnormalities other than the bruises or petechiae. There shouldn't be any particularly enlarged spleen or liver. There shouldn't be any lymph nodes that are enlarged out of the ordinary. And when we do a blood count on this well-appearing child, the only abnormality seen on the blood count is a low platelet count because platelets are the elements in the blood responsible for the blood clotting. The white blood cell count should be completely normal. The hemoglobin, or the red count, should be completely normal. And when you look at the blood smear under the microscope, there should be no abnormalities or funny-looking white cells that might be concerning for leukemia. If there's anything suspicious on the blood smear, like peculiar-looking or concerning white blood cells, or if there's something suspicious on the physical examination, like very large lymph nodes or a big spleen or liver, then most likely a bone marrow test would be indicated, which would also be indicated if there is a abnormal white cell count or a low hemoglobin. And the reason we would want to do a bone marrow test in situations that aren't completely straightforward is really to rule out leukemia. In terms of treatment of ITP, the vast majority of patients with ITP will, in children, in childhood, will resolve on their own. Acute ITP is defined as ITP that lasts less than 6 to 12 months, whereas chronic ITP is defined as ITP that lasts usually longer than a year. Fortunately, in most children, ITP resolves on its own. That's about 90 plus percent of the time, whereas in teenagers, ITP can become chronic in about 30 percent or so of the time. Treatment is really based on a decision that's reached between the child's uh, physician and the parent. In fact, many physicians do not suggest any treatment for acute ITP since it will resolve on its own. That being said, with an extremely low platelet count, perhaps in the single digits, and an extremely active toddler, I think many physicians would feel uncomfortable not treating the child. But again, that's, I think, a personal decision, and there are different opinions among pediatric hematologists about when is the appropriate time to treat a patient or not. Clearly, if a patient's bleeding, um, that suggests that one should treat. The oldest, most common, and cheapest treatment is treatment with oral steroids, but you want, to, you want to be sure that the child doesn't have leukemia, so you absolutely want to be certain that there's nothing suggestive on examination of the child or of the blood smear suggestive of leukemia before you start steroids. Other options are intravenous immunoglobulin, um, or in, pa in patients who become chronic, we start thinking about, again, intravenous immunoglobulin, steroids, rituximab, which is something that resets the immune system, or in selected cases, ultimately perhaps taking the spleen out. But certainly taking the spleen out is not a decision that we, that we take lightly, and we hardly ever do that in the acute setting unless there's an emergency situation. There's been a concern about whether ITP can actually be precipitated by immunization, specifically to measles, mumps, rubella, but it turns out that the incidence of ITP is higher following the actual illnesses of measles, mumps, rubella than following the vaccine. 
So even in a child who has had ITP, we still recommend proceeding with the MMR vaccine when it's due. At Mayo, we see a number of patients with acute ITP from the community and the surrounding area, simply because it's a relatively common childhood illness. And we also see quite a number of patients referred here for second opinions for chronic ITP to discuss the various treatment options for chronic ITP because it becomes an issue of lifestyle management in teenagers who really want to participate in contact sports but they have chronic, IT, chronic ITP with a low platelet count and the reason we see such patients is to review the diagnosis, review the prognosis, review the treatment options, review the natural history of the disease and confirm the diagnosis. Thank you.